Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to fulfill some of the contracts I picked up at the end of the previous episode. I had picked them up in order to get some funds, but we got such a huge advance payment, we better fulfill them before we uh, incurred a penalty for not fulfilling them, uh, because we got a huge amount as, uh, as an advance payment for these uh, missions. And of course some of them give us a pretty substantial science bonus, so we might as well get that as well. Uh, some of it is stuff we've done before, but let's start with the things that I haven't done before in this series. For instance, rescuing a Kerbal. That seems to be the most uh, pressing thing, even though they give us a, a one year, 142 day deadline. That's a long time to leave a Kerbal stuck in orbit, so I think, uh, I think we should uh, get to him way before then. So uh, the rewards aren't uh, huge on this. Let's keep it in mind though that we got an advance of 11,000 and completion gives us uh, 48,000. And I'm not going to uh, use a space plane for this one. I want to create a quick automated system that will be reliable and won't take me too much time as uh, somebody actually playing the game. Because uh, the thing about a space plane is it takes a little bit more time to get it back down safely while uh, a rocket will uh, a single stage to orbit and return rocket for rescues would be much quicker and easier and more reliable and then we could uh, do more of these missions quickly all right that doesn't mean I'm not going to create a space plane to do them too but uh, just for the first one I think uh, we'll go with that so let's see what I can come up with there and then also the uh, the second one that we're going to do is the rapier one because that has the huge science bonus and also uh, lots of uh, funds for completion. Alright, so let's go to the VAB. So here's what I've come up with. This is the Kerbal Automated Rescue Service or uh, CARS if you will and uh, it, it can make it to orbit on a single stage I believe according to my calculations. Uh, it uh, has a probe core here and then a capsule for the rescue Kerbal. So it's automated so that we don't have to send another Kerbal up in order to rescue the Kerbal that we're bringing back. And uh, you notice LVT45 uh, here and then these uh, RS-48-7S's uh, 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 on the outside. Uh, yes, it's one of those days. But uh, yeah, and of course I needed the 48 s's because I simply couldn't get enough thrust from the LV T45 in order to do the whole thing. Not if I'm carrying parachutes, I'm carrying RCS fuel, I'm using the bigger landing struts, you know, there's, there's a lot going on here. So the hope is to uh, bring this up and also bring it back to the surface of uh, Kerbin and specific, specifically I want to bring it back to the KSC otherwise it's not as good as a space plane, right? I mean if I'm not getting it back to the KSC uh, that's inferior to a space plane. So we'll try that out. Uh, we got pretty close to the KSC on our last attempt to retrieve a single stage. So anyway, let's uh, go out to the launch pad without a Kerbal and try and rescue our Kerbal in orbit. So we have uh, Sig Sigber Kerman, sorry, Sigber Kerman selected here and uh, in a nice equatorial orbit, thankfully. Uh, you can also see our other mission, the, the nuclear transfer stage that we launched in the previous episode. So uh, just a little bit of time warping to get Sigber closer to us. Okay, well that should be pretty good. I don't usually rely on these sorts of uh, straight up rendezvous, but um, yep, let's see. All right, uh, everything looks good. We don't have a uh, Kerbal sneaking in, so that's important. Throttle is up, SAS is on, and launch. I should action group the little thrusters, these uh, 48 7s's. I could probably turn them off long before they actually go off due to lack of fuel. They're not as efficient as the LVT-45. Okay, uh, 
supplementary engines out. Outboard engines out, I should say. That That's a better word for it. Outboard engine cut off. Still accelerating just fine. Okay, well we've got something going, but it's not great. Perhaps we can... Okay, well I'm gonna call this uh, good enough and then try and uh, correct my inclination. I think I've got an inclination difference that's causing a problem of 0.8 degrees. So I'm just gonna get into orbit like this, which will get us within about 8 kilometers to the target after one orbit. Hope I have enough fuel to do this. It's pretty tight. Just trying to get as close as possible with tiny little bursts. Okay, that's as close as I could get. So now, uh, plane change at the ascending node, which means down. Wow, I've had uh, interplanetary transfers that were uh, easier to hit than this. Uh, we're still 3.3 kilometers after this burn, but I guess we'll just uh, go for what I've got plotted here before trying anything further. Strange, I mean, we're pretty close already, and so I don't know what's up with the plotting, but... but sometimes you just have to take what you can get. I'm not going to use the main propellant for this. I guess I'll reserve the remaining propellant for the for the deorbit burn. I'm just going to use a monopropellant. I mean, we're already what 55, 54 kilometers away from Sigber. We seem to get about a meter per second for each unit of monopropellant. That's important to know. Matching speeds with the target should not cost too much once we get to the rendezvous point. I'm very used to getting under one kilometer on these sorts of things. can't understand why I'm having trouble with this one. It's almost as if Sigbert doesn't want to be rescued. I tell you, Sigbert has been absolutely horrible about the being rescued thing. Uh, does not seem to want to be rescued. Getting close to him is tough. And, uh, mark my words, once we rescue him and uh, incorporate him into our agency, uh, if he gets lost again, I'm going to be very reluctant to rescue this guy, because tough, tough to uh, get anywhere near him. Okay, we've gotten to the point where just turning around increases our distance to Sigmar. So, I'm going to slow down here. Try not to swat Sigmar. A little bit more. There we go. Alright, switch to Sigmar. Uh, bad light on this view. Crew hatch seems to be up there, okay. Alright, get your act together, Sigber. Okay. Am I on the wrong side or something? Oh, it's something like... Oh shoot, don't, don't do that.
Okay, grab. Board. Whew. Finally. Sig Berkerman. Ah, okay. I think I'm going to... Let, let's, let's, uh... Retro burn here, maybe. Or no, I think this is too close. We're, we're, we're higher up than normal, you see. We're at uh, 100. Normally when I retro burn for the first stages, I'm at uh, about 75 kilometer orbit. So I'm going to go around once. So we've only got a tiny bit of fuel left, but if we, you've been paying attention, that tiny bit of fuel is everything. So, I mean, that's a lot of Delta V you've got at that tiny last bit of fuel. Okay, this is more like where I want to retro burn. Well, that's all our fuel. <laughs> so, uh, well, we've got mod propellant, uh, but I'll reserve that uh, for a little bit later. Let's see. How this works out? It looks like we're gonna overshoot, definitely. Uh, yeah, let's let's risk using the mod propellant as well. It's easier to decrease the orbit from out here than closer in. Okay, that's literally all of our fuel gone. So now we'll find out how close Sigber gets. Oh, totally overshooting. Oh, well. So definitely need to make a space plane for this sort of thing. That'll make it easier to hit the KSC, assuming I don't completely mess up. Oh, the KSC is actually over here. That's another bit of debris there. Sigberg Kerman re-entering the atmosphere. Okay, and parachutes. SAS off. So this uh, thing was a little bit under fueled, I think, altogether. It's got a bit more thrust than we technically use, but not too much. I don't think I could load it with more fuel than it has. We'll have to make a Cars 2, but maybe a space plane would be better. If we can unlock the Rapier engine, then definitely a space plane would be better. Full parachute deployment brings us to 6.5 meters per second. That's uh, close. Not too sure if it's safe or not. We'll see. This has a very wide base, so perhaps it's buoyant, I hope. A uh, bit of a tipping. Tipping was not catastrophic. So uh, it tipped over, but it uh, still managed to remain intact. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, no science parts. We got 85.8% of the total value, more than a 260 kilometers away from KSC. We got back 16,000 funds. I think this one cost about 20,000 altogether. So that was fuel, of course. We brought back Sigma Kerman, got some reputation for that, and contract fulfilled. Okay, so next thing, testing the rapier engine. Now, if we were supposed to test it in the atmosphere, in the low atmosphere, or otherwise test it in orbit, Perhaps the space plane would be better for testing the rapier engine. Uh, however, because we have to ignite the rapier engine in a suborbital trajectory, which is the condition for this contract, we have to light it between, let's say, 76 kilometers and 86 kilometers, just to give buffer. It's actually more efficient to send it up on a rocket like this and hopefully bring it back down. We're going to go straight up, straight down. Bring it back to KSC kind of thing. And uh, it's only 11,000. So hopefully that'll be good enough. 
Let's see, uh, you know, uh, we are going to discard a nose cone. And that is because uh, we've got staging wrong here. And that's so. Uh, uh, that's. I don't know if it's strictly necessary. I needed the nose cone in order to uh, smooth things out because Elegant Design Bureau, we make things look aerodynamic no matter what. But. Uh, except for these parts. Well, these parts are technically aerodynamic. If you look. If I retract uh, the landing gear, you'll see that they actually smooth out the lines and block the landing gear from unfortunate aerodynamic effects. So it's actually aerodynamically positive, these little tanks on the side here. But yeah, I don't know if I strictly need to detach the nose cone or not before igniting the rapier. Possibly not. Possibly I could do it like this. I hope so. Let's, let's see if we can test it like this. That'll be best. Then we can bring it all back down. Uh, I think I've forgotten something. I've forgotten parachutes. We need parachutes on this, otherwise it's not coming back down in any safe manner. Um, how many do we need? I'm gonna say three. Okay. I hope the parachutes didn't put too much of a burden on this question is whether we can reach the required altitude all right so save and you know what instead of a nose cone maybe well putting a parachute on a decouple anyway let's just go with this let's just launch okay here we go suborbital flight let's see if my math worked out I was estimating I think uh, 3200 meters per second of Delta V to get to that altitude but then I just slapped on the parachutes, which I have not recalculated for, so so we'll see. We'll see how it works out. It might be that if this fails, it's fine. We, we intend to retrieve it, so we're not going to lose any funds except for the fuel. And since we're going straight up, straight down, it should be close to the KSC. All right, here we go. What's our... Oh, okay, our apoapsis is good, so let's cut the throttle there. Okay, suborbital trajectory and altitude requirements. Okay, I pressed spacebar, but it didn't do anything. Okay, there we go. Test rapier successful. Now we definitely want to turn off the rapier engine, otherwise once I throttle up, if I do throttle up to slow down our descent, it's going to fire and that would be not good. So Okay, back down. Not trying anything drastic. That's the end of the fuel. Oh, interesting place to land. Really didn't expect that we'd be on this side of the runway. Somehow further north than I needed to be. Not far enough west. Or east, sorry. Not far enough east. Seven point three meters per second iffy. Could have done with some fuel to slow us down here. Okay, but it was uh it landed safely and I can recover a vessel. Okay, said no science here, but we uh completed a contract so we got more than two hundred science out of that. And I didn't even think it cost. Its cost was twelve thousand, but okay, maybe it was more expensive than I thought it was. Uh, Ninety-eight percent of the value. So, yes. Okay, on to the next thing. Okay, so taking a look at this, we've got two plant of flags. Those are manned missions, and uh, we've already planted a flag on the moon and on Ike. 
so no rush on that and you'll notice no additional science out of that either so uh, yeah I, I want to get a combo of funds and science we already got the advances for these things and we've got about two years to complete them though I'll have to make sure that I don't uh, overrun that otherwise I'll incur the penalty but uh, it looks like we've got science data from Ike and that's from space, a science data from space around, around Minmus, we've done that before of course. Uh, but uh, these two missions don't require a landing, which is interesting, and they, don't, they also don't require Kerbals. Uh, Explore EVE, landing on the surface is part of it. If we really want to fulfill the entire contract, we'll have to have a EVE surface lander. And so that's probably best done by something that's just going to end up uh, sitting on EVE. We'll just do that in one mission, and that'll be that. Uh, of course, in contrast to my other series where I sent uh, multiple missions to EVE to do that. So really, what we could do is send one mission, one robotic mission, that will uh, achieve orbit around EVE, transmit or recover the data from EVE, uh, achieve orbit around Gilly, transmit or recover uh, scientific data from... well, transmit the data from uh, Gilly, land on Gilly, transmit that data, and then head on back to EVE, land on EVE, and transmit that data. So we could do the, those in one mission. This Joule mission requires achieving orbit around Joule and then transmitting or recovering scientific data from space around Joule. So it's sort of like these missions. So what I think I'll do is we haven't done much Gravioli stuff. All we've done is Gravioli on the runway and Graviola, Gravioli over uh, Kerman's waters. So we've got a lot of Gravioli potential here. So we should send a Gravioli to Minmus, transfer it to Ike, and then transfer it to Jewel. Let's see if we can do that. That'll be something we haven't done before. So uh, a single Gravioli mission that'll hit all three of these. Let's uh, go to the VAB and let's see what I can cook up. Now the thing about this mission is it's going to be hanging out for a while and we'll have to pay attention to our other contracts so that we don't uh, run out of time on them. But so you see here Probe Core, Parachute, uh, in case we want to, well, we'll want to eventually recover all this because we're doing that, right? It's supposed to be 100% recoverable. And once these tanks are empty, really this uh, parachute is sufficient. Uh, all these tanks put together uh, shouldn't be more than the mass of the capsule, right? This parachute is meant to bring this capsule down. So th the empty mass of this uh, is less than that. Uh, but it's got plenty of Delta V. It's got the Rockmax 48.7S here. And so it's got slightly less than uh, a thrust weight ratio of one at the start. Uh, the Gravioli is here. I think we only need one to do multiple uh, tests, though. If that turns out not to be the case, I'll have to reevaluate this. But it costs 8,800, so I certainly don't want to pack more than one unless I need to. Uh, in fact, it's uh, uh, if we just take a look at the cost of the probe, the probe is only 13,000. So the 8,800 that the Gravioli costs is uh, most of it. So that's interesting. The rest is the launcher, of course. The launcher has to be one that can carry all this fuel up, and really the only one I've designed is the OV6 series. And so here we are with the newest version of that, without the solid boosters, of course. So um, we're not going to have that part, but we do have the full range of parachutes, as you can see. So our first goal will be to bring this back down while after getting this into orbit. All right. So uh, let's take her out and uh, try and launch this mission to Minmus, Ike, and Jewel. Okay, I time warped through nighttime, which is why we're at T plus 4 hours and 56 minutes here. Uh, wow, I, I really need to maybe lock suspension on these struts, because that mainsail is basically touching the ground right now. But okay. Um, Let's go, throttle up, SAS on, everything seems to be in order, well, actually this is definitely not in order, and uh, can do that as well. Alright, now we're ready to go, launch, whoa, hey, that's a bit wiggly, that's probably because the struts weren't balanced, okay, well we're okay now.
Plenty of fuel left over. Okay. And stable orbit. No worries. Now let's uh, decouple the mission. Okay. Off it goes. Looks good. Let me check its uh, reaction control. Okay, so I think the the probe core can handle it. It's tiny little reaction wheel and it's torque. Okay, good. Now back to the launcher as we have to bring this back down. And I'll handle the transfer to Minmus today and the science around Minmus. And then we'll see about the stuff to Ike and Jewel. That'll probably be mixed in with some of the other contracts we have to do so that we don't uh, overrun the time limit. Okay, so uh, taking our mission around. Our nuclear stage is still hanging out around there. Gonna have to put it to you soon. But I want uh, contracts that require manned stuff. Uh, what I'd really like is uh, some sort of plant a flag on one of Jules' moons. That would require one of the one of the a nuclear transfer stage, right? So sort of waiting for that sort of contract. Maybe after we do this science around Jules mission, we'll get that kind of contract. Okay, let's try that. Whoa, 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 no, 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 that's not what I meant, <laughs> that's not what I meant, around, back around, back around, before the atmosphere prevents us, okay, and that's all I can do about that. How high can we... that's 25 kilometers that we can deploy the parachutes, right? Right over. Not as good as last time, even though we had more fuel to spare. Okay, let's go parachutes. Well, it's if pre... Okay, now they've, they've gone out there. Okay, below 6 meters per second. Let's see what's going to happen. Actually, it's not flopping. Oh, it's flopping. Let's see. Uh, I'm curious. Ah, massive explosion. Uh, okay. Well, we'll we'll pick up the pieces later. Uh, so, no hope for uh, recovering when you flop down like that. But anyway, uh, to the mission. Really, just the advance on this mission already makes up for the loss of the launcher. So, I'm not too perturbed by that. So, we've got, uh, well, we've, we've got quite a lot of credits now uh, in funds. So, let me do the Minmus part now, and then we will attempt further things in the future. Probably around 90 degrees is good for Minmus. But we're going to have to have an inclination adjustment. Okay, that's satisfactory. We're not lined up for a transfer to to Duna slash Ike yet. Yeah, we're a long ways off from that. In fact, uh, yeah, it's gonna take a while. We could do Gravioli here. Actually, let's try that before. I uh, said I'm. It's been a while since I've done uh, Gravioli in stock, so I want to make sure that we can re redo it. Uh, so if I log gravity data now and transmit from space above Kerbin's grasslands, uh, 
Oh, no. Darn it. Okay, uh... Spin around, get more electric charge. I, I'll have to remember to make sure it's facing the sun throughout all this, otherwise we're going to be in trouble. Why does it always say plus zero signs added when I've sent two extra data? That's not fair. Well, at least it uh, goes faster when you time warp. Doesn't prevent you from time warping. Okay, done, finally. Okay. Now, gravioli, still available. Okay, where are we? Kerbin's water? Space, though, so that's different from what we did before. Transmit. Is it actually getting added to our tally? I wasn't paying attention to that. Okay, well, we still got time before the maneuver node. Where are we now? Mountains, yeah, sure. So now I'll pay attention. 251.8. Better give us our science. Okay, it does. Said 8 science, right? Says done. It gave us less than 4 science. And here, curve in water, we can still transmit for 2.6 more science. So it doesn't really complete the job. But anyway, we have to do our burn now. A little bit late, actually. So, let's figure out how much Delta V this thing actually has. I think uh, about uh, 3.6 tons altogether. And 3 tons of fuel. That's a ratio of six. It's a totally space stage, so we use the vacuum ISP. 6,150. So it's a nifty little thing, this one. But it'll only work out if... Uh, I really should have put more solar panels on it. It'll only work out if we can transmit the data efficiently. Okay, now let's turn around to face the sun so that we minimize the possibility of failure in terms of power loss. Okay, I think that's pretty good in terms of minimus approaches. Actually, we could do better. We could get the low over minimus as well. But I don't think we're going to get that close, and we're going to have to make an adjustment otherwise. Okay, to Minmus. Passing right by the orbit of the moon. Oh, I think that's Minmus right there. Kerbin's water? Really? Okay, I, I, I guess we're still over Kerbin. Okay, yeah, yeah well, that, that makes sense. We're so far off. Okay. Uh, really? Wow. Uh, high In space, high over Kerbin's water. So all the biomes has a have a high over as well, huh? Oh, heck. Uh, let's transmit that data while we're here. Here we go. Now I'm in the sphere of influence. Now transmit data high over the lowlands. And it's going to take a while. But I think, uh, yes, contract fulfilled. So that part is done, but now we have to make sure that we are situated for a transfer to Ike, which means a stable Kerbin orbit. And definitely not one that looks like this. Uh, so, 
Okay, so in the course of plotting, I've uh, hit upon a moon encounter, and we haven't done gravioli stuff around the moon either, so we might as well go for it. Uh, so we'll get more science that way. I'm not really milking all the science because we can do over uh, do the gravioli over every biome and all of that. We're going to have a close Minmus periapsis, but I don't think it's close enough to get low over Minmus. I don't want to totally miss out on the moon encounter, so maybe I'll just take it. Uh, and of course, uh, having a moon encounter like this, well, maybe we could get closer. Let's see. Hold on a sec. I'll uh, come back to you once I've tweaked this a bit. Okay, I think I'm going to wait a while for the moon. I'm going to wait until I'm outside of Minmus's sphere of influence to uh, fix up any sort of moon approach. Right now we're about 3,000 kilometers away from the moon. but uh, And we're 36 kilometers away from Minmus. I forget if that's close enough for near Minmus, but I better do this maneuver now before it goes away. So you see, uh, the more I increase my Minmus periapsis, the more I'll decrease the approach to the moon. So it's sort of a give and take, and I'll, that's why I'm going to wait until later. Let's see if this is close enough. I don't know. Uh, we, I think we're okay in terms of... Let's point out the sun a little bit better. There we go. Now, let's see if there's any more gravioli stuff to be done. Mimesis Lowlands. Okay, whatever. Let's transmit. We have a thermometer here. Let me just check. Ah, can't be done right now. Should have known. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to uh, call in an episode here. So next episode we're going to deal with this probe and we are going to see if it can get uh, close to the moon, then to Ike, then to Jewel, and if we have to fulfill any contracts along the way we'll see what the deadline for these contracts are. We'll have to do those as well. Alright, so uh, with that, uh, that is the plan. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.